and you were cleansed. Look what it says, you were cleansed, you were washed by the blood of Christ, and you are sanctified. So is there hope for adulterers? Is there hope for adulterers? Is there hope for fornicators, effeminate, and all kind of unrighteousness? Is there hope? There is. There is. But we have to turn away from our sins. We have to put away our sins. We cannot keep our sins and say, God, I'm righteous. Or well, now I want, I want this man now, but the one before, no, I didn't want it. So now I want this one. That's foolishness. That's selfishness. And that's unrighteousness. Little children, let's keep ourselves in the love of God. But there's hope. We can be sanctified. If there's some of you and are in such relationships of fornication, sleeping with people who's not your husband, adulterers, fornication, whatever, all the things that says here in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 through 11, I believe it's the verses. We can be washed. We can be sanctified. But we have to put away the sins. We have to put away that unrighteous marriage that you call it. God doesn't call it a marriage. He calls it adultery. Revelation 22, 14, it says, Blessed are they that do his commandments. Blessed are those who are not looking for other beds, but the first marriage you marry. Blessed are those that keep the commandments, that they may have tree, that they have a right, pardon me, that they may have a right to the tree of knowledge, the, tr the right to the tree of that life, where the fruit of life is at. But they might have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Do you want to be those who are blessed? I do. We got to put away our sins, don't we, little children? We can be washed. We can be sanctified as dear adults. We can put away our sins. We can give away our unrighteousness to Christ and give it to the Lord. Lord, take away my unrighteousness. Take away my adulteries. Take away this marriage who I did out of my own flesh, but it was not part of your will or of your word. We can. We can for sure. Uh, but those who are not blessed, for without our dog searchers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Among those whoremongers are adulterers and fornicators. Ezekiel 16.32 it says, But as a wife that committeth adultery, which take a stranger instead of her husband. That is what adultery is. You take a stranger, you're with somebody else who you did not marry first. Simple as the word is in the little children. Simple it is. Now for closing, we have two more beautiful verses in the word of God. Now this is, in case there's still doubt, they shouldn't be. But in case, John chapter 4 verse 13. John chapter 4, that will be the fourth book, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. John chapter 4, verse 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. And it says, Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. Remember, Jesus was at the well of Jacob, and where he meets the woman of Samaria. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. Christ is the water of life. You drink of him, you never thirst again. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him. A well of water springing up into everlasting life. The water that Christ referring is to everlasting life. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not. Neither come hither to draw. Jesus said unto her, Notice, Jesus is offering salvation to the woman. But look what Jesus tells her. Go and call thy husband. Jesus said unto him, verse 16, this is your memory verse, little children. Go and call thy husband and come hither. Verse 17, also 17. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. The woman lied, oh, I have no husband. She had many husbands, many people who she chose to be married and given into marriage. The woman answered in verse 17, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, thou hast well said, I have no husband, verse 18, for thou hast had five husbands. Wow, this woman was a great adulterer, wasn't she? She was a great unrighteous woman. She was a great sinner. She had had five husbands, and the husband whom she was with is not her husband. That's why Jesus says, and who whom thou now hast is not thy husband, 
And thou says thou truly. Verse 19, the woman said unto him, so the woman is convicted. <gasps> How does Jesus know I've been married five times? <gasps> How does Jesus know the man I'm with right now is not my husband? And then she says out of her own conviction, the woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. You know my life. You know my sins. You know my secret sins. You are a prophet. Can we, can we deny such testimony? No, we can't. The whole verses here are so beautiful. But Jesus says, you have five husbands. The husband you're with is not your husband. But notice, God didn't say, here you go, my daughter. Here's eternal life. Receive me. No, no, no. God offered to her, but said, bring your husband. He wasn't a fool, you know. I'll give you eternal salvation. Where's your husband? He brought her her major sin to her face. And she acknowledged it. Adults, if you're in a relationship, you need to acknowledge them. You need to go to the Lord in prayer and searching all the scriptures. We need to acknowledge that if you're in such a situation. Close in Ecclesiastes 12, 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty. Our duty is to put Christ on, to put the Lord Jesus in our lives and to keep the commandments. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing. Remember that woman had a secret? With every secret thing, there's many women and men who have that secret. But God is going to show it. But you know what? God is merciful enough, little children and adults. God is going to show you your sin and he's going to show you the truth. Do you want to keep your sin or do you want to be saved and washed and sanctified? Whether it be good or whether it be evil. We have a choice. God is good. He's not going to push yourself on us. He's going to say, would you let me come into your heart? Would you give me your adulteries and your fornicators and your unrighteousness and all your sins? And it's for us to respond, yes, Lord. Or be like the rich young ruler who didn't want to give up his riches. But my prayer is, little children, for you to know the truth. For you to be sanctified, for you to know the the teachings of the Catholic Church and abstain from that Babylonian confusion that they teach, their doctrines and their religion and their paganistic religion. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. So that's it. This is it. So thank you so much for watching this video. And may you choose the faith of Jesus and the commandments. That's how it will occur. Heavenly Father, your word has been shared. It is plain as plain. Now, Lord, I pray for your Holy Spirit to go to every heart who's going to watch this video and to see their secret sins, if they have any, such as the adulterers and the fornicators, and such as every other sin too, Lord. Search our hearts and our thoughts. Please, Lord, come to our hearts. I pray for all the beautiful children that they may want to love you with all the heart and mind and soul. Be with them, O oh Lord, whatever they are. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Thank you so much, little children. Let us keep ourselves in the love of God. Bye-bye.